Joey is our latest conversational character robot. He is uh, obviously of the punk rock genre. He has a little bit of an attitude, and uh, his features include face tracking, voice recognition, and a little bit of um, uh, facial expressions, which are still being developed at this time. But he can cover, uh, he can emulate over 62 facial expressions. Our robots are made of a foam like elastomer that we have dubbed Frubber and it is actually more stretchable and, com and compresses much more like human skin than any current uh, substitute on the market today. You can see that we have, uh, in one hand, a, a silicone-based uh, animatronic-type skin, which is very tough and it's very difficult to, to stretch and requires about 20 times the amount of energy to stretch and to compress than Frubber. And our Frubber actually allows us to make these wide range of facial expressions. Joey actually has his own personality and his own uh, chat engine installed. The AI is all developed in-house along with the Frubber and the engineering and the mechanics that go into the robot. Uh, it actually takes um, quite due diligence and, and time to get the robot, uh, robot's personality up to speed. But what it is, it's, um, it's a database of information questions, answers that are all compiled in, in random order so that he will actually uh, pull from this, uh, from this pool of questions and answers uh, of, 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 with your questions and actually uh, formulate what we have uh, attempted to form as uh, an intelligent response. Our robots are actually powered by a single laptop computer, as you see here. The laptop display is, is showing the robot um, his facial tracking features that are currently enabled, as well as uh, serving as his brain and his personality engine. He has two embedded cameras in his eyes, and they are, of course, linked to his personality and the AI and the facial tracking software. So um, when, when you couple that with, uh, with uh, audio d direction, you can actually uh, track a face and couple it to the person who is speaking. Developing a character uh, can take um, many different approaches. Uh, we currently have two approaches that we have, and one of them is actually sitting down with somebody, sketching their face, and then sculpting them out of clay. After they're sculpted from clay, then we will actually make a mold of their face and then a skull, and then create uh, a lifelike representation of that person, living or dead. Um, of course, the, um, our, our next and most advanced method would be to actually do a laser scan of their face, which would then put it into a 3D CAD, and then we would make a mold from that, and then you would have uh, a much more realistic representation of that person. Uh, Joey was actually a, a collection and an average of 1,000 faces that were scanned over time and then put together. And these, uh, these faces consisted of people of different sex, race, and genders. And the, the goal was to create the ultimate uh, androgenoid or androgynous robot. Over time, and as, as we continue to develop the robot's AI, uh, we plan to actually link uh, his emotions to responses and questions and hopefully be able to read a person's facial expressions and then respond accordingly as you and I do when we are in conversation. Uh, as of this time, uh, the robot is currently pulling from his list of response, uh, his own list of expressions, and and displaying those with his with his comments in his conversation. As with uh, human beings, we um, we have incorporated a, a moving jaw, um, and actually, um, the the anchors and the skin are coupled to the motors in the back of the head. So whenever the uh, expression engine uh, sends a signal to the CPU board, the CPU board will then send a signal to the servos to pull and pull on the skin and therefore create uh, lifelike human expressions. Well, as you can see here, we have effectively uh, recreated uh, the human cre uh, cranium as best as we could. We've incorporated all of the servos, gears, mechanisms, the wires and even the robot's controller board within the head and then encase it into uh, a skull-like um, enclosement. Uh, here on the top row, you can see that we have the servos, which um, each are pulling and pushing at the same time, which are um, recreating different muscles. So you may have one, muscle, uh, one servo that's pulling in this direction, 
and it's uh, raising an eyebrow while at the same time you have um, maybe lifting up on the lip at the same time. Um, that's not necessarily the case for this, but that's just an example. Um, on the top row, we have these servos, which are, are, are moving and pulling on the robot's uh, upper portion of his head face. He's got a very large uh, database of information, personality, uh, and uh, all of the code that goes into it is it's quite extensive. To what extent, I'm not sure, but it's, it's several years of, uh, of development on other robots' code uh, compiled into what you see today. So as we create a robot, we're basing upon the precedence of other code and hopefully making our robots more sophisticated over time. What we can do is we can find ways to incorporate more sophisticated levers and polling systems and uh, ways of anchoring our, our, our skin to motors. So, and as I had mentioned earlier, we are currently incorporating a new system for moving the jaw, moving the skin. Uh, and so, yes, we are beginning to downsize that so we can create more room inside the head for other uh, devices, maybe even a more powerful CPU. There is current research that's going into uh, certain actuators uh, that, uh, I guess, that are anchored inside the skin that as, as you apply electricity to the actuator, it either expands or contracts. Um, those are some uh, areas of of actuation that we are looking into. But what we have done is we have revolutionized the way that animatronics and entertainment robots are built. And this has been done through our introduction of Frubber, which uh, actually requires about 1 the amount of energy to manipulate than traditional animatronic skin. So what we're doing is we are decreasing the power requirements, we're increasing the portability, and the relevance to, to any type of uh, entertainment facility.